there's a reason why I did this clock. Not just to fix it, but to prove a point. I wanted to prove to you guys that no one can tell you that you cannot do something. I took this as a challenge. I dived into something that I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what I was doing, but I did it. Just to prove a point that don't be scared to do something that you're not familiar with. Don't let fear change your mind or dictate what you must do. Don't let anything or anyone tell you what you can and cannot do. If you really want to do something, you can do it. If you can work with your hands, there's nothing that can stand in your way. Hi guys, subscribe to my channel now so that you do not forget. Hit that bell icon and get notified of my further uploads. Lastly, feel free to comment. Show me some love by giving me a thumbs up at the end of the video. Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. I am at last on my first day off in this series of four days. This is how clean this gears is now since we cleaned it last. And I think it's time we close it up. There's the chains, there's the rest. As luck would have it, there is a lot of external noises today. There's someone grinding on this side, there's someone mowing the lawn on that side and Murphy's Law. That's just how it is. So forgive the noise. Um, I can probably do the uh, voiceover, but unfortunately I'm going to forget what I said now. It's going to be different uh, and I don't want to make it different. I'm going to do it as we go. The first thing that we are going to do now, we have to test the gears. We have to test the system first. We're going to, no, we're going to put this plate back on now, where it belongs. And of course we have to put the chains back uh, there, there and there, we have to put the chains back. So unfortunately I won't be able to record it while I'm doing it because I can't work here and look through the camera, it's going to be a bit cockeye. So uh, that's what I'm going to explain to you now. The trick now is all these gears are loose now. It's not as stiff as it was before I cleaned it. So for me to put this plate back on, uh, I have to <laughs> be very careful use a tweezer and manipulate everyone a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, you know, until every pin fits into its own hole. That's going to be fun. Because there's going to be one of them that's going to fuck me around. I know that for a fact. But we're going to try it anyway. Once the, the chains are on, once the plate is on and it's secure, then I will definitely continue recording. So just give me the next few minutes hour, day. I don't know how long it's going to take just to do that. But I'll be back just now. Okay, let me guys, let me show you quickly what I've done now. I've fetched the chains. I've put them exactly the way they were. I've looped them. Now the loops is where it has to go around the silver gears. So I'm going to take them now, loop them around, and then I'm going to put the back plate back and secure. Okay, as you can see, the chains has been looped around those gears. So now we can put the back plate on. Okay, this is now a bit tricky. As you can see, those gears aren't really in the holes. They're not really straight and so on. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking, um, sorry, taking this little socket I'm turning each one a little bit at a time and as I'm turning them I'm taking a tweezer and I'm moving these gears until they fit snug in all its own places before I tighten it down totally. I'm so glad that I'm doing this very slowly. I just realized that this gear over here was in the wrong place. If you guys can see that hole, uh, where's my finger? That hole? Wait, let's do it like this. Ah, if you guys can see that hole, it didn't line up with any hole on the top plate. That's how I knew that that gear was in the wrong place. Well, yeah, luckily, huh? So I just moved it over. So uh, let's proceed to put the back plate on again. 
The last thing that I wanted to do was to bend one of these um, little gear pins. You know where the gears go into the holes? It's very, very thin. Uh, put it this way. It goes in here. It's got very thin tips. And the last thing that I wanted to do was to bend one of those tips because of tightening the plates too fast together. So luckily, as I did a little quarter turn on every screw, I took my tweezer and I made sure that every gear is having a play like that. Uh, come on, you bastard. A little play like that, you see. Everything's got play. Everything's in its hole. And as I was lining them up, I turned the quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn all the way until I was absolutely sure that all my gears are in their places. They're all moving frequently. I know I fucked up the spring. I don't know how I'm, gonna, how I'm going to fix it. It doesn't look like the spring serves any purpose except for this lever. Um, we're going to see if I can straight, straighten it somehow, but it happened during the cleaning. I didn't see it. So my chains are back. Uh, they're hanging already in their correct places. I'm trying to look through the camera lens, so it's a bit cocky. And it's clean. The only thing that we have to do now is we have to set these cams correctly. This one for your um, hourly chime. This one for your quarterly chime. And yes, success, guys. As you can see, the quarterly one was always turning. That wasn't an issue. But look at the hour one. It's turning, guys. It's turning. Uh, let me just put this chain back. Come on, you fuck nut. Everything is turning. That side is turning. And this side is turning. It's excellent. It didn't turn before. Remember the hourly side was stuck. The quarterly side was working up to one point. Now at least, the mechanism is fine, it's working. It will chime, it will work. All we need to do now is set the time cams correctly so that the system chimes at the correct time. And that's gonna be the next step. But overall, I'm freaking stoked. It came together brilliantly, it's clean. All the oil is out, everything is turning, everything is moving. Man, I'm so happy. Okay guys, I think what I want to do now before I finish assembling the clock, because I think I'm going to continue tomorrow, is I would like to show you this. These little holes here, this is where the oil is supposed to go into. This is your oiling pins. Not, uh, don't do what my mom did and use Q20 spray can and spray everything full of oil because that's why we are sitting where we are sitting. You're only supposed to oil these little holes. And the guys overseas, I see they get nice kits with little, little, little brushes that they literally just brush a little bit of oil on each gear. Unfortunately, we don't have any. So that's why I got this little syringe. I'm gonna drop a little bit of oil and like use just a drop of oil on each pin and then I will give it a few hours just to set in and then tomorrow or later I'll take a cotton bud and wipe the area clean where the oil is um, going into a while leave an hour turn it around well the other side and clean that spot just to make sure there's no running oil and to give it some time to soak into the system I just want to use this tip and just make sure that all the oil, all the oil, you see all the old oil, that is old oil. I just want to go around each hole, make sure that all the old oil is out of the place where it's not supposed to be, and then we'll oil it again. So the oil I'm going to use is this uh, quartz 
5W40 synthetic wool. Um, one of the clock uh, forums that I read said that you must use a 4W or 3W40 or 4W40. Unfortunately, this is the only thing that I could find, but it's synthetic wool. And you literally use less, less than a drop. Honestly, you use so little, it's not funny. And um, yeah, the reason why I had to buy this is because when I went to that clock shop in uh, Dahlstrom, the guy told me, no, we cannot give you this oil because it's not good enough for your clock. So why the fuck are you selling it? It's clock oil. This is how much oil I drew up. It's extremely little, little, little bit. And this oil is going to last me two lifetimes. Because you just use less than a drop and you only oil the clock once every five years. Or when the clock starts, stop movement stops moving, then you oil it. But this is really, really a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. And uh, let's see if I can have a little bit of control over what I'm doing standing here. If I don't have control, I'm going to have to um, sit down. So there's a drop. There's a drop. There's a drop. So I'm just putting little drops like that. In all the places where the oil has to be. Okay, I'm just going to move the camera out of the way again and I'm going to continue oiling all this side, turning it around, oiling the other side, and uh, then we'll carry on from there. Okay, guys, let me quickly show you what I've done now. I'm busy assembling the front part of the clock. Um, this gear is what runs your hours, okay? The longest point is 12 o'clock and the shortest point is the quarter hour. This lever, that over here, uh, sorry, this lever is the one that picks up and down that allows your chimes to chime. Now this wheel here is a quarter, half an hour, hour, and this is the side of your quarterly chimes. This is your hourly chimes. So to make sure that I'm exactly on the beginning of an hour, I put it ready here to strike the first quarter hour once it's at quarter past. This one is set to the first quarter hour pin, uh, pin so that it can go off at me when it's a quarter hour. So everything is locked into place. Now I just need to set this one right and then I can add all the wheels and make sure it will chime exactly like it should. As you can see, it, it moves up and down. So that pin, at the moment, is locked into the three-quarter hour. So, as the clock turns, it picks up. And there you get your first strike. Ding, 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 ding. Huh? Quarter hour. Then we'll go up again. And strike half an hour. Then we'll go up again as the clock turns and you'll get your three quarter and then lastly will be your hour strike you see it picks up higher it's going to pick up another lever here which is going to activate this side to click an hour okay so that's locked into place and that's locked into place Okay guys, the only thing that I've done now is I have uh, put up the hour cam, the part that actually chimes the hours, the spring and then this gear. So I'm just going to secure this gear, then I'm basically done with the front part. Then I'm going to put up the back pieces. Um, I actually got so busy in putting it together, I actually forgot to record what I was doing, but never fear. We still have to test my theory whether it's going to chime 12 or chime 1. Depending on what it's going to chime, it's going to probably tell me where I must put my um, hour and second hand. So um, hopefully I'm at 12. I think I'm at 12. I'm at 3 quarter here. So it's going to turn once. It's going to chime 
uh, one uh, on the hour. So it's going to start by chiming an hour or 12, depending on where I've set it now. And hopefully I didn't mix up the settings. Luckily, once the clock is up and running, or inside the, the actual body, I can still adjust this to make it work better. I don't have to open up the system anymore. The gears is fine. The gears are working. Everything that works, that allows the clock to work correctly is happening here. So uh, we'll see how that goes once it's up and running. Okay guys, this is as far as I have assembled. I've put up the, the hour cock, oh, well, I don't know what to call it, hour cam, I think, or whatever. I put up all the levers at the front, connected all the springs. I um, did have a bit of a disaster. I accidentally lost um, one of these uh, retainer, screw, retainer clips, C-clips. It was an accident, I picked it up and it slipped out of the tweezer, fell somewhere and it's so small I can't find it. But everything I think is secure in front, I'm just not sure where that clip works, I think it works somewhere at the back. I'll see if I can make another plan to um, hook anything at the back that needs to be hooked. But uh, yeah, this is as far as I got today. Good morning guys, this is the next morning. We have completed the front part of our clock and um, due to uh, noises again externally, I'm busy doing washing and jamming to some 80s. I'm not going to talk too much today. I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do quickly. I'm going to fix the back of the clock. That means I'm going to uh, put the chime mechanism back um, and of course put the put the hammers back and then we are going to take this mechanism put it in the clock and we are going to test it and if it works that will be the end of this week's video then next week I will show you how to set the timing okay I'm going to say it it's hammer time <laughs>
Now the good news is that the mechanism is working. We just need some adjustment. Okay, just to show you guys that this side is working that that uh, didn't work. See? It works! This side unfortunately doesn't stop working because of this lever. This cam is different. It's not the same as the cams I've seen. This pin is supposed to lock in somewhere here but there's nothing here to catch. So I'm going to take these cams off later and just see what's the problem there. And then uh, I need to get that split pin. Remember that C clip that I lost? It has to go on here to stop the our um, hand or arm from falling off. So there's a little few stuff that I need to do still. But the main repair for the clock is done. It's been clean, it's been stripped, it's been assembled. The gears are working that didn't work. I'll call this a success so far. I'm very happy. So uh, yeah, under 18 weeks, eh? It's about four or five weeks now since the project started. Physical working time on this clock was about 15 hours and I've done everything. Except for these few little changes that I need to do. Oh, and I found out that I actually put the, the chimes in the wrong way. Um, it's not chiming the chime according to the cam. So I'm going to take the cam off, set it to chime the correct, you know, the correct times. Because it's on quarter pass, it's supposed to chime only once, but it's chiming three or four times. So I just need to do settings. That's all I need to do. But I think this project is done. Um, when I get to the settings, I'll record that again. Um, but it's time for a new project, something different. I think you guys are sick and tired of watching this clock for the last month. So uh, I've got a new project that I'm going to be doing while I wait to get some money to buy the circlips and do some research on the settings. But otherwise, I think I'm happy. Um, I'll close up the clock once I am fully done and fully happy with it. And that's it. Well, guys. That's the end of the clock project. It feels like it was a long project since it took me a couple of uh, weeks to complete it. Um, I'm sure I could have done it within the four days if I actually had four days off like normal. But between working and overtime and shifts, it was just a bit too difficult. But for those of you guys who sticked around and watched the videos, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of this type of content. Um, Next up, we're going to fix uh, all tape deck. Um, this is more for the, the young generation newbies that doesn't know what a tape deck is because my kids decided it's something to put a lot of sweets in it and play with it. So I have to actually open it up and fix it. And, uh, it's going to be a nice project because I know it works, but I need to replace the rubber bands inside and so on. Clean the heads, see if it still plays my tapes. I still have about 30 tapes left believe it or not. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, the next project that I'm thinking of. And also setting the clock and fixing that uh, chiming problem that I have. That'll be uh, upcoming. But for now, I think the clock is done. I've set out to do what I needed to do and that was to disassemble it, clean it and uh, make sure that it works. It is done. I'm very, very happy with it. Thanks very much for, for watching. Remember to subscribe, you can comment if you need to comment or you want to comment on anything. Give me a thumbs up to let me know if the video is good or bad. And uh, then I'll see you on the next video, man. Cheers.